If you've ever gone to the doctor because you felt fatigued, you were experiencing mental fog, maybe even low sex drive, or just like something isn't right, and walked away being told, well, your labs are normal, you're not alone. The labs we're gonna cover today are hardly ever ordered in a standard clinical setting. Honestly, only a third, if that. But in my experience, if you are trying to get real answers around fat loss resistance, poor performance, hormonal dysfunction, or even recovery issues, this starts with building a comprehensive picture. This means testing strategically. Now these 21 labs are typically what I'm gonna recommend we order right out of the gate. And this is especially true if we're trying to understand HPG or HPO function. Now the HPG access, hypothalamic pituitary gonadal, this is the overarching system that regulates hormone production and reproductive function in both genders. Now in males, the gonads are the testes. They produce testosterone and sperm. In the females, the gonads are the ovaries. They produce estrogen, progesterone, and eggs. Now in clinical discussions, the HPO gives more precise context to female reproductive patterns. While HPG is more of a broader term that can cover both sexes. And while some of these labs might not be tied directly to initially the symptoms that you're experiencing, they can help us rule out differential diagnoses, narrow down system dysfunction, and get real context so that we're not guessing. So if you're someone who's tired of hearing everything looks fine when clearly it's not, this is where I'd start. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through 21 lab tests I would recommend every client gets. If you care about optimizing your hormones, your physique, and your overall health, then I would stop guessing and start testing. There's 21, that's a lot. For each one of these, I'm going to break down what the lab actually is and why it's important we get it measured. Number one, a CBC. This stands for complete blood count. This is gonna measure red and white blood cells, hemoglobin, hematocrit, and platelets. Why do we need to order this? This is a baseline for overall health. Understanding hematology can help us catch signs of anemia, immune stress, and inflammation. All of these can seriously impact energy and recovery. Number two, a CMP, a comprehensive metabolic panel. This is going to help us measure glucose, kidney function, liver enzymes, as well as electrolytes and albumin. This is essential in understanding hydration status and how these systems are affected by different balances of specific electrolytes, as well as your body's ability to partition nutrients. Realistically, a CBC and a CMP are gonna be included on most orders from doctors. Number three, a lipid panel with ratios. This is gonna help us look at total cholesterol, including good fat, bad fat, so HDL, LDL, as well as triglycerides. Why do we order this? Well, realistically, you want to have something more than just low or high cholesterol, and these ratios can be really powerful predictors in cardiovascular health and metabolic health. Number four, vitamin D. Now, specifically 25-hydroxy. This is gonna measure the storage form of vitamin D in the blood. Now, vitamin D is critical for immune function, mood, hormone synthesis, and even fat metabolism. And spoiler, most people are deficient, even if you spend a lot of time outside. Number five, CRP, C-react protein. This is a marker of systemic inflammation. Elevated CRP can indicate hidden inflammation that can even blunt fat loss, recovery, or performance. Number six, fasting insulin. This measures how much insulin your pancreas secretes at rest. Now this is actually an early indicator of insulin resistance and can be much more predictive rather than a fasting glucose or an A1C. Higher insulin equals harder fat loss and more cravings. Number seven, HB A1C or hemoglobin A1C. This is going to be a three month average of your glucose levels. This can be really helpful when you're in seasons where you're intentionally pushing up food in helping identify prediabetes, glucose instability, or a very poor carb intolerance. Now there are a lot of factors that influence glucose. So even in lean people, this is something that we should keep an eye on. Number eight, DHEAS. Now this is a precursor hormone produced in the adrenals, primarily involved in hormone production. Now low DHEAS can indicate chronic stress, or even HPA dysfunction. This is critical for energy, mood, recovery, and libido. Number nine, pregnenolone. This is the mother of all hormones. All adrenal and sex hormones are synthesized from it. Now, if pregnenolone is low, 
This could be limiting your ability to produce testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, and even cortisol. This is definitely an upstream bottleneck worth catching. Number 10, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. FSH is a pituitary hormone that signals to the gonad, so the testes and the ovaries, to produce either sperm or eggs. Why do we order FSH? This can help us evaluate fertility, cycle health, and whether or not our brain is actually signaling for the production of these sex hormones. Number 11, LH, luteinizing hormone. This is another pituitary hormone that's involved in the process of triggering ovulation or the production of testosterone. Now, oftentimes when evaluating FSH, we're also going to pair it with LH in order to understand whether or not effective communication is occurring. This is useful for PCOS, amenorrhea, hypogonadism, and even low testosterone evaluations. Number 12, prolactin. And while this one is primarily known for stimulating milk production, high levels in men or non-lactating women can actually suppress testosterone, libido, and mood. Number 13, SHBG, sex hormone binding globulin. Now this is a protein that binds to sex hormones like testosterone and estrogen, making them inactive. Now if SHBG is too low or too high, you might experience symptoms or just feel differently relative to where your total levels are at on account of SHBG essentially robbing you of total circulating levels. This is a critical context when evaluating testosterone and estrogen. Number 14, total testosterone. And you guessed it, yes, this measures total testosterone circulating in the blood. Now, although this is a starting point for evaluating androgen status within both men and women, in itself, total testosterone is not enough. Number 15, free testosterone. This is the active and unbound form of testosterone that can be utilized. This is the amount of testosterone that globally is gonna impact mood, recovery, performance, and libido. Largely, this is gonna be more reflective of how you feel versus just total testosterone alone. Number 16, estradiol. This is the strongest of all of the forms of estrogen. Now, estrogen isn't just a female hormone, and having too little of it or too much of it can cause serious symptoms and unwanted effects. Estrogen plays a major role in fat distribution, insulin sensitivity, and joint health. Number 17, progesterone. Now, this is a hormone that rises after ovulation and in both genders balances out the effects of estrogen. Now, low progesterone can cause mood instability, cycle regularity, symptoms of PMS, sleep disturbances, and fertility challenges. Number 18, cortisol. And yes, it does matter. We want you to do it fasted. And ideally, you do this prior to taking any kind of stimulants or anything that would drive up sympathetic nervous system response. Cortisol is the primary stress hormone in the body, and even having a little bit too much coffee or going to get a workout in or hitting the sauna can alter these values. Chronically low or high cortisol can impact your sleep, mood, fat loss, and even your recovery. Number 19, TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. This is a pituitary hormone that tells your body to produce T4 and T3. TSH is essential for screening for overall thyroid health. A high TSH can typically indicate a sluggish or a suboptimal slow thyroid. Number 20, free T4. This is the inactive form of thyroid hormone made by your thyroid. It shows what your thyroid is producing and it's essential in getting a comprehensive picture of overall thyroid health. Now, last but not least, number 21, free T3. This is the active form of thyroid hormone that is produced and converted from T4. Now, this is what actually drives metabolism, energy, and thermogenesis. Now, while it's not the end-all be-all, low free T3 levels can sometimes indicate stubborn progress and low energy. So there we have it. Those are the 21 labs that for almost every client that I get, I'm gonna ask that we get checked. And listen, don't just collect these for the sake of getting them measured. Use them, monitor them, get context, because when your internal health is aligned, your external results follow. I know this was surface level, that was the intention. If you found this helpful, definitely let me know in the comments down below. As always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.